Hi, Chris Good here, and we're going to do a really quick solution to the repeated measures ANOVA that we did in lab on uh, this past week's lab. So uh, we're going to do this in Excel. I am set up the source table so it's a little bit different than the way we actually did it in lab. Let me make a little bit of space here. And this is the way it's going to look on the test. Um, and this just makes more sense with the way that we've been seeing source tables that result from uh, ANOVAs uh, on other types of questions. And um, well, let's see what, what it looks like as we fill this in. <clears throat> so this uh, question is asking about um, random sample of eight adults. Everybody's given a treatment then a memory test, and presumably these are counterbalanced order, and they're measuring memory scores. So we're going to find out whether a significant difference exists among the average memory score. Let's calculate that first by doing means for each one of these groups. Just copy and paste. Let it be your friend. Um, We've got means for each one of our groups. Now we need to state our null hypothesis. These are the sample means. The null is about the population mean. And we hypothesize that mu1 equals mu2 equals mu3 equals mu4, because we have four treatment groups. This is not a treatment group. These are subject numbers, so don't mess with them. Don't include them in any calculations. To get an alpha, uh, should get an f crit for an alpha of 0.05, we need to know what the degrees of freedom are for our numerator which is going to be this mean square, and for our denominator, which is not within treatments. We're actually going to use the error mean square in the denominator. So um, we're going to need to know what k and n are and what little n is. So let's start with little n. So we'll count the scores that we have in each group. That's also the number of participants. Just one of those is the number of participants. Um, we'll count the number of means that we have. That's what k is. I know it's 4. You could just put 4, but we're going to count the number of scores that we have, not including the subject number. And that's all we really need to get degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom between is k minus 1. Degrees of freedom within is n minus k. Now we can get total degrees of freedom, which is the sum of between treatments degrees of freedom plus within. It's also big N minus 1. So here's big N. Big N minus 1 is the same thing. I say that total is the sum of between treatments plus within treatments because we're going to do the same thing to get sums of squares. We're not going to compute within treatments sum of squares the way we have been. We're going to get it by subtracting between treatments from the total. That'll give us within treatments sums of squares. We could have done the same thing with degrees of freedom. But right now we have our degrees of freedom in the numerator and in the denominator. Oh, we didn't get error degrees of freedom yet. OK. Now we need degrees of freedom between subjects. That's the number of subjects minus 1. And error is the difference between within treatments and between subjects. Now we can get, and remember, error mean square is in the denominator of f. So f is going to be this mean square divided by error mean square. Don't have a value for it yet, but watch what happens when we fill in the table. So this f crit is going to be evaluated at 3 and 21 degrees of freedom. If we look in the table, there's our f table, there it is. At 3 degrees of freedom in the numerator and 21 degrees of freedom in the denominator, f crit is 3.07, just like we did in class. And now we're ready to calculate f. Let's work on between treatment sums of squares. That's the sum of t squared over little n, add them all up for each one of our four groups, and then divide by this quantity, g squared over big N. g is just the sum of all of your scores, not including the subject numbers. All right, g squared, you just square that quantity. g squared over n is just this divided by big N. And I'm going to come back and do the grand mean later. Let's, let's go ahead and do our t's. 
All right, t is just the sum within a group. t squared is t raised to the second power. And t squared over n is t squared over n. Get that problem. Use the um, keyboard shortcut for copy and paste. It might, might save you some time. Now we have everything we need to calculate between treatments, sums of squares, which is the sum of all your t squared over little m's minus g squared over big N. That's the sum of squares. Now we can get mean square, sum of squares, divided by degrees of freedom. Great. We still don't have f yet because we need our error sums of squares. And to get that, we need between subjects sums of squares, but to get uh, but we also need within treatments sums of squares. Well, we're going to get within treatments by subtraction. Remember that the total degrees of freedom is within treatments plus between treatments. And the total sums of squares is within treatments plus between treatments. So if we know total, we can subtract between to get within. Subtract between treatments, that is. The total sums of squares is the sum of the square deviation of every one of these scores from the mean of all the scores. So let's get the mean of all the scores, which we call the grand mean. And then we're going to get deviations for each group. You see how I've labeled these over here? Deviations, so control minus the grand mean. We're going to subtract that same mean, so I want a double dollar sign there, from every single one of these. Right? So now I've got deviations for every score. Then we square those deviations. I'm not referencing scores. I'm squaring deviations of every score from the grand mean. All right, there we go. Now, the total sums of squares is just the sum of all these squared deviations. And now, we can get within treatments, which is total sum of squares minus between treatments sums of squares. That's the way it's going to look on the test, too. So make sure you can do this. Now it's time to get between subjects. To do that, we need our p-totals, which is the sum of each participant's scores. And p-squared is just that squared. And p-squared over k is just p-squared over k. But it's the same k for every score. So you could type 4, you could reference the cell using the dollar signs, and then, then when you copy and paste it, it'll use the same k, right? Dollar sign b, dollar sign 15, c up here. All right. And we know that between subjects is just the sum of p squared over k minus g squared over big N. Now we've got between, we subtract that from within to get error within treatments minus between subjects equals error, just like we did for degrees of freedom, within treatments minus between subjects equals zero. And now we've got a mean square over here. We can do sum of squares divided by degrees of freedom for error, and there's our magic F ratio. That is calculate F, and our decision, of course, is to reject, because 75.67 is way bigger than 3.07, right? So if 3.07 is here, 75.067 is way, way out there. So here we'll sentence number one. I'm going to write it over here so it stretches out a little bit. Um, there is a significant effect of treatment on participants, possessive plural, memory score. F of 3 and 21 degrees of freedom equals 3.07, and P is less than point. Zero 0.5. All right. Of course, now we need to do 2B's HSD to find out where that difference lies. So we'll go to the Q table, which is right up here. And it wants four treatment conditions. And we don't have 21, but we use the closest, which is 20 degrees of freedom. We'll use Q 3.96. If Q is 3.96, then HSD is equal to Q times 
the square root of um, the error mean square divided by little n. And we end up with about 1.42. Now there's only one of these means that's, that's not significantly different from another one, and that's between caffeine and control. So we have to talk about all these differences. So let's start with the highest one. So when, when participants take drug, drug A, their memory score is significantly higher. than when taking drug B, caffeine, or the control treatment. When participants take caffeine, that's the next highest one, their memory score is significantly higher. than when taking uh, drug B. And when taking drug B, scores are significantly lower than the control. Those are the only significant differences that we'll talk about with HSD equal to 1.42 and P little p less than 0.05. Um, we might want to add a little bit here that says two keys post hoc testing. So post hoc testing with two keys, two keys. HSD revealed scroll over so you can see the whole sentence. That's it. I will post uh, this video and I'll post other solutions to the practice two and practice three problems real soon. See you next time.